Mr. Furman. Thank you. surprised you didn't mention because I get it every single interest. The only one that it hasn't mentioned, I'm not Dean Furman, the soccer player. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else heard about Dean Furman, the soccer player. <laughs> okay, two people. So it's good. More people in this room know me now than the soccer player. <laughs> That's great. So, yeah. I was asked to just talk about myself for 10 minutes, which is great. Um, I didn't go to public school or public public school. I went to private school, and like every second person coming out of private school, I became an actuary. <laughs> and yeah, um, you guys know what an actuary does? Yeah. Thank you. I didn't when I started studying, so this is one step ahead. Um, then, a as I qualified to become an actuary, moved across into the normal corporate landscape, similar to what a lot of you guys are from. I see a lot of guys are from banks and stuff. I went over to Discovery because as a Jewish kid, that's sort of, you went to Investec or Discovery. I uh, <laughs> went to Discovery. And uh, while I was there, I created a lot of new products for them. And I was pretty good at the innovation thing. I didn't quite like the actuary thing. It was very dry, very boring. And I knew I didn't want to be in that. And I won a couple of their annual innovation awards. And I quickly found out, okay, being an actuary is not my thing. Actually, being in a corporate is not my thing, but uh, yeah, I want to move, move towards the innovation space. I didn't know what that meant, but I thought, okay, let me come up with this cool stuff. And then 2015, things changed for me. First time I got out of a normal corporate big entity, and it's amazing. I was a bit of a know-it-all when I was inside an organization. I thought, okay, I've won all these awards. Everyone thought I was the man because I created all these new products for them. It was looked up to by others. But then I moved outside of the organization, and for the first time, I had time and a bit of a mandate to learn and to actually see, okay, what's actually happening in the world? How do we create new radical innovations? And that's what I was tasked to do. And then I realized I knew nothing. Because you know what it's like when you're so busy at work, how much time do you actually have to sit and learn and keep up to things on a day-to-day -day basis? And the world moves so quickly that suddenly you are so far behind that, and the problem is everyone else with you is also so far behind. So there's no one to actually give you the wake-up call internally to actually be, Listen, dude, you should just, uh, you know, upskill yourself and actually get with the new world of innovation. Not even innovation, just the new world of technology and the way things work. Um, so after a while, did awesome stuff there and wrote about Mel and Guardian, one of the top people under 35 in South Africa, created quite a new, <coughs> few new different companies for the Alexander Forbes group, which is no one realizes it's for them. And one of the things I was very passionate about was education and helping people. And the final thing I did before I said goodbye to that entity and that organization was imported like basically the world's biggest platform for informal learning, something called Degree. Imported it to say, here now it's in South Africa exclusive rights for the Alexander Forbes group. And then I started talking to people about the need to educate yourself, the need to upskill yourself, the need to, so the, the need to learn on a day-to-day -day basis. And then I thought to myself, okay, I, bit wasted trying to help one organization. I'd rather try help lots of them. And then that's where I decided, okay, let me go on my own. And in a number of formats, let me start my own company and help companies either together with their strategy or through speaking. And also a little bit to get credibility. And also it's hard to go up to people and say, uh, I've learned so much. I know a lot of things about a lot of stuff. You know, it's very, uh, you need to articulate it better. So what I did is I wrote the book. I hope you, all of you have got a, a copy. Uh, it's, in the, it's in all the decent uh, bookstores, uh, Exponential Potential. And there it took a lot of the learning that I had over a couple of years and put it in. Everything from how do you grow a business. Doesn't matter what size the business is, you've got general principles, but not the old age principles, the old boring stuff. The new age principles, how do you use new tech to drastically reduce the price of anything that you do? How do you do things that you never would have thought possible? I know Tapia came to watch me when I, I did a talk for RMB and they were a bit uptight. They didn't want <laughs> they didn't want me to show, but I said, okay, look, do you know what I want to show as a demonstration of things you're able to do this day? I can look at, uh, in, give me someone's email address and I'll find do a full personality analysis of them just using artificial intelligence. 
Chris Anyue to look in hell. Did it for their leaders, and they, there was some negative stuff about them, so they said, no, nope, no way you can present this. But it's just amazing the type of things you can, you can actually do now on a day-to-day -day basis. So really enjoyed putting the work together, because it also got me, my thinking together and crystallize it into how do you go about, if you're a big corporate or you smaller individuals, but how do you go about actually trying to grow a company, but in the way it can be done today? So many people now do not realize, whoever I speak to doesn't realize just how much enabling technology, and, and technology, the word even frightens people, but how much enabling tools there are to help you on every element of, of what you do. Even, I don't know how many of you know Fiverr.com, have you ever been to? Okay, one, two, three. So basically, like, things like that. I got my start of business, got my logo designed, $5. I had, a, I had a, my, a voiceover for what I was doing, $5. A video creator, $5. I created all the infrastructure around my company, probably spent a thousand rand, not even, whereas other people go about doing that and you know, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of rand. And now try to educate companies how to get together with this. And they show me and they said, I say, okay, you, you know, they're spending hundreds of thousands of rands on things that are freely available, but people don't know that. So it's not just innovating, it's really plugging into the new world and realizing that you can do things not only better, but a lot cheaper than you've ever done before. So uh, here's just some of the talks that I give. Um, I need to hear exponential potential because I have to, my book's called Exponential Potential, that's what everyone asks for. So, but then, nothing, an organizational neuroplasticity is something, it sounds fancy, but it's something I talk about in, in, in my book. Neuroplasticity a lot, at the time when people refer to it, it's how a brain can be rewired over time. So the thinking before was that, okay, it can only be rewired when you're a child and you can't, adults can't really rewire the way they think and the way to change. That myth has sort of been busted by new uh, neuroscience. But I like to talk about what about an organization? Because you've got a lot of organizations that really do need to change and drastically shift the way they do things. And but how do they rewire their organizational brain? How do they go about changing the way they do things? Otherwise, they are actually going to get stuck and become disrupted and won't exist anymore. And then another thing <coughs> is know-it-alls will go extinct, become a learn-it-all. This is just because I realized that myself. Like Randall Stevenson, a guy, he's the CEO of AT&T in the States. And he said, if you're not spending five to 10 hours online learning every week, uh, you're going to become obsolete and irrelevant. And most people, I don't know how many people here have managed to do that. Not many. So I know it is true, and it's not many. And only I only started doing that when I was actually given a job to do that. And then I realized, then you catch a bug, and you're like, wow, there's so much to learn. I want to learn more. I want to learn more. Over the time, you exponentially change yourselves. And then so many people, that's the thing, is so many people will end up losing jobs in the next couple of de decades to technology. But on the other side, the people that really plug in and understand the new way of doing things, there's more potential than ever before to really catapult what you're doing. Like for example, I don't know if anyone saw, now Amazon just bought that company Ring for a billion dollars. Did anyone see that? So it's an amazing story. The guy was on Shark Tank, you know, the TV program, five know-it-all judges stood in front of them. He, four of them said, no, not interested. The fifth one made him a really lousy offer. And uh, yeah, he, he didn't accept the offer, and he really took guts to do that. Now, okay, four years later, he just got bought out by Amazon for, for a billion dollars, which is pretty amazing. It's just how, if you have a dream and a vision, and you plugged into a lot of time, it's plugged into what is the enablers around you to really catapult what you're doing. It's amazing how someone like that would never have been possible before to have a company like that bought for a billion dollars. And then something, this is a lot more practical thing that I've been asked for, because a lot of the time I find that people come and speak and you get a lot of inspiration, but the next day you don't quite know what to do with it, because you get a thing, you're like, the world's changing, people will be in space, and there'll be cars flying all over the place, and whatever everyone tells you, and you're like, that's amazing, got to re re shift what I'm doing and change the way, but I actually don't know what to do the next day. This is a very practical talk to say, guys, has a tool set, a new tool set for you to plug in, just so that tomorrow you can go back to your work and you've got a full tool set to know what to, what to do with it. And as a good lab can also offer 
like longer workshops to really, really get <coughs> the, into that in de detail. And then global acceleration, again, talking for large organizations, is how the world's changing, shifting, how companies uh, have been disrupted, how the lifespan of companies, previously it was the average Fortune 500 company had a lifespan of 75 years. Now it's, the latest studies have said 15 years, which is actually, if you think about it, before it was like a human life span, now it's at like the last span of a chihuahua. So, so and actually less than that, I checked it. So, <laughs> so it's amazing that uh, how things have shifted. And then lastly, very similar, but disrupt before coming disrupted. How do you get that mindset, that thinking that's into your organization to really be the one to actually go out there and change things and not just be defensive to stop others coming to attack you. And that's me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dean.